So Gary, I just got this new light sphere and I wanted to start with really simply, like how do I put it on? Um, you put it on like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, okay, first thing is, is if you have a flash that can swivel sideways, yes. you want to actually turn it sideways like that. Um, and I'll show you why in just a second. But um, obviously we have four sizes of light spheres and we just basically put it on um, and you know, it just kind of stretches over the uh, thing. So sometimes you might want to have, have your hand inside it and put it on like that. But it's a good, nice, tight fit, mm -hmm. okay? So that's basically how that goes. Now, um, the reason why I turned the strobe sideways like that is because, and this is really cool, for vertical or horizontal, all I need to do is do this. Oh, so if I'm I shooting, don't have to twist anything. Right, so if I'm shooting vertical, I go like that. If I go horizontal, I go like that. And it's much faster, so if you're shooting an event. Um, with this one, uh, the photojournalist without the dome, in a lot of instances, you want to point it kind of 45 degrees forward because it has these really cool little ribs. And, it, and what happens is when you pop the flash, it lights up the ribs, and it just basically kind of uh, gives it a bit more of a spread. With the dome on, um, you can go straight up and down all the time. I like shooting with the dome on like 100% of the time, but the reason why you take the dome off is for uh, super high ceilings. And you want to just like give a lot more light up there to kind of light up the background. That's basically what it's for. So without the dome, I'm, I'm in a place with a really high ceiling and then I go without the dome. That's what you would recommend then? Yeah. You know, the fun thing is you want to experiment. That's, right. You look at the L LCD and you kind of play with it. So that's, that's really kind of the key is just kind of experiment, look at it, see what you like better. Because all the different cameras behave kind of differently. So Gary, I read somewhere that you wanted me to do something with the pull-out diffuser. What's that do? Well, anything that's going to soften the lighting is better, and some cameras have it and some don't, and either way it's fine, but this gives you a little bit more of a wide spread. So when the light goes up into it, this, uh, the little diamond pattern here is going to go up, and it's going to send the light a lot more wider into the dome. Okay. So that's basically how that goes. The other thing that's cool about the dome is if you shoot outdoors. If you're shooting outdoors and you want to shoot direct, you just basically put it like this. And what happens is you can kind of see the pattern here. It'll really reduce the harshness and the contrast when it hits the subject. So it's a really nice way of shooting outdoors, open shade or in uh, direct backlight. It should make a really nice catch light too. And it makes a really nice catch light. Also, it really reduces red eye. Perfect. Yeah. So Gary, I really prefer natural light, but I end up having to use the flash a lot. I'm always in a situation where I have to use flash. What can we do to make it better? Well, I'm the same way as you. I, I would rather have available light whenever I can because it's just much more flattering. And flash, the reason why we don't like flash is because if you look at the quality of the flash unit itself, this looks just like a flash light. So that's why people look so harsh and stark, like, you know, a deer in the headlights kind of look. Because imagine you're in a dark room and you point a flashlight at someone that looks like kind of like cops. You know what I mean, right? When they're chasing the, the gangster around and everything like that. So um, the idea behind the light sphere is to make the light not direct, just kind of like a lampshade in a, in a bedroom. If you take the lampshade off and you stand there, you'll see a big, you know, shadow behind you. The minute you put the lampshade on, it softens the light all around the room, and it sends light all around the room right. itself. This is kind of like that idea, um, but we're going to use that uh, to make the, the portraiture a lot more flattering. And I'll show you the difference. So we'll get our model Jamie here. Jamie, go ahead and stand right there. And Yep, perfect spot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a shot like a regular person would with the flash, and I'm going to do kind of a, a vertical shot. So we'll just go in like this, and... And you can see there's one heck of a shadow here. I mean, it's just cast off to the side, and she looks exactly like you would expect if you pointed a flashlight at someone. So then, uh, for a long time, people have been saying, OK, well, let's use bounce flash. Um, because the idea is, instead of pointing the flashlight right at the person, why don't we point it up in the ceiling and let the ceiling light the person? But the problem with that is, you get this um, deep eye socket kind of a look. And I'll, I'll show you basically what I mean when, I, when I'm talking about that. So we'll do the same shot here. and. Good, Jamie. And we got, we've got, I mean, her eyes are completely recessed into the shadow, and we've got shadows underneath it, and it's just not a real flattering lighting. Now, with the light sphere, I'm just going to go ahead and put it on here, and I'm still going to do a vertical shot, but I'm going to just go ahead and go just like that, and perfect. And you can see that the lighting is just a lot more soft, and there's very, very little of a shadow. So basically what's happened is this thing has now sent light up into the ceiling, uh, the little inverted floating dome uh, is sending light into the diffuser and all the way around. So basically, just it's like a lampshade. It just basically makes the light completely soft throughout the room. So you've completely improved on-camera flash.
Yes, totally. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that I really struggle with is I want to do really beautiful portraits on location and I don't think it's ever appropriate to bring umbrellas and lights and I don't have an assistant to set all of that up. What can I do with the light sphere? Well that's what's so cool about this thing like especially at a wedding you're not gonna like in the middle of we're here at the Ritz Carlton and could you imagine there's a cocktail hour going on and we're gonna set up umbrellas and everything like that. Let me get like my that. crew. Yeah. Exactly exactly and it's just not really a good idea. The thing that's amazing about this is that it produces really, really beautiful portrait lighting. And, you know, I call it, you know, portrait lighting on the dead run because, you know, that's that's basically what you're doing that's all the time I've when got. you're shooting. <laughs> exactly, what you're sh when you're shooting a wedding. So um, what I basically want to do is when I set the camera, I want to go ahead and usually on a camera like this, uh, this is a Fuji S3 and we, we've got other cameras here, but we want to go on manual setting. And manual setting allows us to control the aperture of the lens as well as the shutter speed in the background. If you have a lens with an open aperture, say f2.8, 3.5, you know, 4, you're starting to get into, it's getting a little bit tough. But, um, you know, 2.8, 2, this is a, a 1.4 lens. If you have it wide open, you get this really beautiful fall off from the, uh, from the depth of field. So what I'm going to do is, uh, Jamie, let me have you come here. And we basically just have a hallway and, uh, and a sofa and just regular regular lighting. So just go ahead and lean so that you're coming toward me. So what I've got here is uh, I'm shooting at manual mode um, and I'm gonna shoot this one, at, this is an 85 millimeter at f1.4. We're gonna go just a big open aperture because what'll happen is the person's gonna be in focus but the rest kind of disappears. And also the nice thing about being manual is that I'm able to slow down the shutter speed so that more of the ambient light comes in. So I want you to just basically see we're just in just a regular spot and, and look at the quality of portrait I'm, I'm going to get in just a second. So we'll just kind of go like this and good, Jamie, perfect like that and beautiful. And there's a shot. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, so that was a really cool shot with light sphere. Let me show you what it would have looked like had I not had it. So I'm going to take this off and I'm just going to point it straight at the model like we typically would and just like that. Good, and perfect, and oh god, that's ugly. All right, now, then the question arises is like, okay, well, you know, since you're just pointing up anyway, why don't you just do bounce flash? So let me just show you what that looks like. So I'll just point the flash straight up. We're gonna bounce into the ceiling. I'm gonna do the basic same thing, and, and that's what you get. And it's uh, really, really kind of a difference. And so if you compare the three, it's, it's like night and day. So Gary, I can totally see the difference in those three. It's it's like you took a studio quality portrait without the studio. It's amazing. I know exactly, and I, I don't even know how you would like shoot without it. So Gary, how do I do a group shot in a space with a high ceiling? Well, like for example, you're saying like a wedding party group or something right. like that. Well, obviously we don't have a wedding party here, but I have three of you. So what we'll do is we'll kind of spread you, uh, you know, apart as if you were a large group uh, group photograph. So basically what's going to happen is in a situation like this where we have a ceiling that's super high mm -hmm. and you know we have people at kind of a distance, I'm going to go ahead and take the dome off because okay. what that's going to do is that's going to make the ceiling much more bright and it's going to light up the background because a lot of times when you're taking group photographs in a church, the people are all lit up really nicely but the back is really, really kind of super dark. So we're going to try to fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one shot straightforward with flash and then I'm going to do it with the light sphere pointing straight up. Okay, so we'll do the first one. And let's get... Uh, uh, Becker and Jamie and you guys just go ahead and spread out as if you're like a 20 person group or something like that. Um, go a little further back, actually right here in this dark area. This will kind of be a better demonstration of what the lighting's going to do. I've got uh, on camera direct flash and I'm just going to go ahead and aim it at you guys right there and looks like this. So it's really just kind of harsh and, and not that super good. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the light sphere on. And in a situation like this, I'm going to go ahead and take it down to a slower shutter speed and also a wider aperture. F4 would be maybe as, as you know, big as I'd want to be. Uh, definitely don't want to do F8. Definitely don't want to do anything, you know, smaller than F8. 5, 6, 4 is better because when you have a group that, that, that's that large, if you have a wide angle lens, you're, you're totally fine. So I'm going to point this thing straight up into the air just like that. And I'm going to do a shot like this and perfect. And uh, it's much more, and you'll see, as you can see, it lights up the room a lot better. 